Hello. Welcome back to Learn Right Biology. Don't forget we are still on um, levels of organization of life. Specialized eukaryotic cells. An attempt to look at levels of organization of life. In the previous video, we explained what specialized cells are. And we listed some examples in animals and in plants. In this lesson, we want to look at some specific eukaryotic cells. In fact, in the whole course of biology, you'll be handling some of these cells. If you come to sense organs, you look at cones and rolls. Cells in the eye are responsible for vision. If you come to blood circulation, you look at structure of red blood cell. If you get to nervous system, you look at nerve cell. So you want to look at few. So I will leave the rest. When you get there, you, you understand them. But for the purpose of understanding what we meant by specialization, we want to look at some examples of specialized cells and how they are adapted to perform their specific roles. Let's look at the sperm cell. Sperm cell. The full name is spermatozoon. Spermatozoon. The human sperm cell is produced in the testes. Let's draw it nicely and look at how it's adapted to perform its function. So it's made up of the head. And this is where we have the nucleus. So the whole of this is the head. The middle piece. And the tail piece. Between the head and the middle piece, we have the neck. So, put the neck here. Then this is a middle piece. From here to here is the tail piece. So this is the head. This is the middle piece. Sorry, neck. This is the neck. The whole of this is the middle piece. That is the tail piece. Up is clear, tail piece. Then, in, at the anterior end of the head, we have what we call uh, acrosome. Acrosome. So we are treating the spermatosum or sperm cell. So this acrosome. So this is the nucleus. And this is your cytoplasm. Then in the neck, we have central. Don't forget central is necessary for cell division. Because when the sperm freezes in the zygote, sorry, when the sperm freezes in the ovum, the zygote will be formed. And the function of the zygote, just when I go repeated division, 
to produce more cells that will specialize to become a multicellular organism. And you know, you remember we were talking about the function of central that they are involved in cell division. So we will not forget central there. Then in the middle piece, we have very large, few but large mitochondria. Few but large mitochondria. So, I have some mitochondria here. So one is mitochondria. Then we have Asia filament. Asia filament. Or the middle piece to the tail. Asia filament. So these are till, call it flagellum. So you draw this nicely. If it's examination that room that you're asked to draw this, it must be big. Examiner will give you a range between 8 and 10 centimeters. So you should ensure that it's within the range. Then the title to your drawing, drawing of a human sperm cell, nicely. What are the functions of the sperm cell? What are the functions of the sperm cell? That's reproduction. How does it do this? How is it capable of performing this function? You know, the sperm cell is deposited in the vagina. The fertilization occurs in the fallopian tube. Remember fallopian tube? The fallopian tube. So you remember is the egg. Just a sketch, okay? Just a sketch. You remember this? So the sperm cell is deposited here. It, it meets with the ovum here and fertilizes with it. Yeah. There's a need for it to have a tail that will enable it to, to swim. Tail. You, you remember tilapia? Till, that's Newton's third law. To every action, there's equal and opposite reaction. So a till that will move, and this will provide forward force that will move the sperm cell. Without energy, the sperm cell cannot swim. So the need for large mitochondria. I call it serious mitochondria, not class one type of mitochondria. The sperm cell is very small. Mitochondria. Few but large mitochondria in the middle piece to provide the energy. Then, you know, the egg cell is big. The egg cell is big. Is the egg cell is far, far larger than the sperm cell. And human being produce by what you call vertiline membrane. Vertiline membrane. 
to protect it. It's very delicate. Because that is what will ensure continuity of the female. So its egg that it has produced is protected so that nothing will destroy it. Can you imagine bacteria entering the organism and feeding on the egg? No. So it's not easy for the egg to be penetrated to even destroy the genetic material in the nucleus. So, several, for the sperm cell, there are many. There are numerous. For the sperm cells, there are many. Millions of sperm cells will try to penetrate the egg. To penetrate the egg. Okay. Let me clean this one. Penetrate the egg. The first one that is able to penetrate will fertilize, will fuse, will have its nucleus fusing with this nucleus. It's more interesting. But I told you that the vertical membrane, the outer covering of the ovum, is tough. So there's a need for the sperm cell to have the ability to digest the vertical membrane so that the sperm cell can enter and have its nucleus fusing with the nucleus of the ovum. So the acrosome, this structure, not an acrosome, contains enzyme, specifically lytic enzyme. You remember lysosome? Lytic enzyme are enzyme that would digest. We have different types of enzyme. We say lytic enzyme will digest the vertical membrane so that the sperm cell can enter. In fact, out of the millions of sperm cells surrounding an ovum at a time, only one will be able to. The first one that enters, the moment you have fertilized, others can, they can decide to enter, but there is nothing for them to fertilize. So they are occupying space. I hope it is clear. So we have looked at how the sperm cell is adapted to perform its function. Till to swim from the vagina, to meet the egg, the fallopian tube for fertilization to take place. Few but large mitochondria to provide energy. Then light, sorry, acrosome containing lytic enzyme to digest the vertical membrane of the ovum for the sperm to enter, finally enter. What about the nucleus? The nucleus contains genetic material. Because that's reproduction. <laughs> it is because of the nucleus that you are suffering. But the nucleus will bring the chromosome, the DNA, the height of the baby, the skin of the baby, you know, so that the baby will be a baby for the father. Then the Asia filament. You remember I told you about microtubules, cytoskeleton, that this structure, and have animal cell to maintain shape. It also move in space. So you see, it's helping the tail to swim. So microtubule help the tail. To be for its rule. I hope you have understood it. Let's summarize the function of the sperm cell. It fertilizes the ovum. Number two. It carries hereditary material in the nucleus from the father to the baby. Let's look at adaptive features of the sperm cell. I want us to begin from where it is coming from. Tail to swim. Mitochondria provide energy for the swimming. It has gone to the ovum. Enter. You cannot enter. What will enable it enter? Acrosome. With lytic enzyme. Will enable it enter because it's going to digest. 
It has ended. What are you coming here to do? You must fuse. If you fuse and so what? You bring genetic material together. So nucleus that will fuse and transmit genetic material. They are the adaptive features of the sperm cell. And don't also forget that the azia filament also help the sperm in swimming. The central are there for cell division of the zygote to form more cells that will specialize. Thank you. I hope you've now understood the sperm cell as a specialized eukaryotic cell. What about the ovum? It also specialized. What are the functions of the ovum? Yes, the ovum fuses with the sperm. The ovum also transmits genetic information from the mother to the baby, that's in the nucleus. Don't forget that the ovum does something that the sperm cannot do. It stocks food in the form of yolk granules for the developing embryo. Thank you for watching Learn Biology. Join me in the next lesson where we look at red blood cells.